Hey everybody, it's Peter, and in this video we're going to do an in-depth comparison of the 2023 Kawasaki Versus 300X compared to the 2023 Kawasaki Versus 650. Now both of these bikes are in the same Versus class, but they are there are differences between the two, and what I'm going to focus on in this video is talking about those differences. So there's the obvious differences, which is power and price, but there's a lot of little things that may make a difference to you as a rider that we're going to go through in detail. So hopefully this will be one of the most detailed videos you'll see of the comparison between these two bikes. And if I don't answer all your questions, I have the privilege of filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. This is the number one volume Kawasaki dealer in the country, and they give me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup. So if you have questions, make sure you let me know in the comments below because I can come back to those questions both in the comments and in future videos. So let's get going with this review. So the Versus lineup is an interesting one in Kawasaki's lineup because Versus started out by standing for versatile systems and both of these bikes and the Versus 1000 really still fit that acronym. They fit versatile system motorcycles. However, the way they go about it is quite different. So this one is a little bit more of an off-road type model. This one here is a little bit more of a fun, sporty, you know, a little bit peppier model. And the Thousand, which isn't in this video but will be in a future video, is a little bit more of a touring bike. So although they're all versatile bikes, they certainly have a preference towards one type of riding over another. We're going to talk about that in detail. But the first thing we need to do is go over the features of this bike. So we'll start with the Versus 300 and then we'll start explaining all of the features that the 650 adds and like I said in a future video we're going to cover that 1000 all to itself because the 1000 is really a flagship vehicle in the Kawasaki lineup with all the technology and that so it deserves its own video. So starting with the Versus 300X, the first thing we have to point about all of the Versus lineup is it is a little bit of a taller bike. Now I'm going to talk about this as a great beginner bike, but if you're five foot two, it's going to be a tall beginner bike. So I'm about six feet tall. I just want to show you what it is for me to jump on top like this. I am flat footed here, so it's not that tall. The seat really scoops down on this one compared to other models, but you can see when you sit on any of the Versus model, you're going to be very, very comfortable. You've got good wind protection. You've got a nice spread to your, uh, to your bars here. Depending on the model, you've got a little bit of extra wind protection on your legs, a little bit less on this Versus X300 or 300X uh, than the Versus 650. And again, Again, a little bit more on the Versus 1000, but you do have good wind and weather protection here to start. So that's a real key piece of the system. Sitting on here, you can see again, very comfortable, very upright. Uh, you don't have any extra weight on your wrists. The seat is very comfortable on all of the models. So that's something that you should be aware of. And the one thing with this is when you start researching the Versus 300, you're going to find out that it started with the Ninja 300 engine. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, it, there is now a Ninja 400 and they don't have a Versus 400. Some people will complain about that and say, well, it should have come with that. And to be fair, that would probably be a great bike as well. But that doesn't diminish the fact that this is a really, really great bike. So I love the Versus lineup. This bike and the 650 are two of my favorite bikes in the Kawasaki lineup. I've actually owned the 650 in the past and I would happily own this one. And if you're a beginner, one of the great things about this versatile system type bike is it can really tell you the type of riding that you want to do. So this one, we're going to show you the wheels and tires in a second. They're a little bit more off-road. Now these are not off-road bikes by any stretch, but it does allow you to go off onto dirt roads on this particular model. And that's exclusive to the Versus X300. That's what that X stands for. None of the rest of them are off-road bikes at all. We'll talk about that when we get to the wheels. But you do have the ability to comfortably take a passenger here, which is a really nice thing. You have the ability to take some luggage up here and you can add accessory hard bags here. So this one comes from the factory as you see it right now. You saw the Versus 650, which we'll bring back in here in a second, had from the factory hard luggage. You can get a different style of hard luggage on here, but the point is, whether you want to do overnight trips, you can do that here. Whether you want to commute around town, you can do that as well. Having a little wind protection is very nice. You can do long trips, short trips, and because it's light and nimble and it revs nicely, it can be fun to drive as far as a sporty type feel. So you can sort of see if you get this as your first bike, you can find out, do I like sporty riding? And maybe you move to a sportier bike from there. Do you like touring? And maybe you move to a bigger touring bike from there. Whatever kind of riding you like, even if it's just cruising, that's a very comfortable bike to ride all day. This is really good for that. And the Versus lineup really does stand out for being versatile. So let's show you a few little details here. We're gonna go front to back on this bike and the dash, and then we'll bring in the 650 and talk about some key differences that you get when you move to that bike. So taking a look at the Versus 
X300, this is what you have out front. Now, majority of the sportier bikes in the Kawasaki lineup have a 17 inch uh, rim here, but you have a 19 inch rim here. So this is again, a little bit more dirt oriented. You can see the tread as well, a little bit more dirt oriented, more dirt road than pure off-road uh, type thing, but you can certainly get off the paved roads on this. And then you have the spoked wheels. This is the only versus with the spoked wheels. Spoked wheels are traditionally used on dirt bikes, things that take heavy impacts and that kind of thing. And you can see the intent of this model here. It is capable of going a little bit off the beaten trail, uh, a little bit more than any of the other verses. And we'll show you the difference, especially when you get to that 650. You have what they call right side up forks or traditional forks here with these stanchions up here, uh, which is traditional stuff. This is a beginner bike and it is priced accordingly. So you have some, you know, budget components here. There's nothing wrong with these, but you'll see that there is an upgrade on the 650. You have a single disc brake here, and of course it has ABS brakes. You can see the sticker there, but also the ring down here, which is for your ABS sensor. So you've got top quality stuff as far as features, uh, but again, very versatile type bike in the front wheel. This would be the most versatile front wheel area with the ability to go off-road, having the spoked wheels as well. Most versatile of the entire lineup. Let's keep moving through now. So taking a look at the rear of this bike, you're gonna see again, more versatile system type stuff. This is a stock bike, this comes standard. So you can see here, you have the racks that come back. You have lots of bars here that are good for handles for your passenger, but also great for tie downs. And what I like about this as being more of an entry level bike is they don't tie you into a specific system to attach luggage. You don't have to buy a certain brand name or anything like that. Even if you bought this without the optional side bags or without the optional top box, you have lots of places to tie things down. You have plates in here where you can have accessories that do fit in there, or because this is basically level with the seat here, you're taking a tent and going camping for a weekend, you can strap everything down here. So this is all standard. The Versus 650 does not have the rear rack as standard. That would be an option, but it does have the side bags as standard, where on this one it would be an option. But either way, you have easy options to take your luggage with you. And that's a real strength in this lineup because a lot of these bikes uh, in the smaller CC classes aren't really adventure bikes. They aren't really great for taking your gear with you sort of from a factory bike. And you can see here, a lot of space here to attach whatever you would need and take anything with you. Moving on to the dash, which we're gonna show you in a second, I'm kind of giving you a very busy look of your general cockpit area because there's a lot of things that I like down here. First of all, over here on the uh, passenger side or the left side of the bike, you do have a little trigger that you can't see which flashes your high beam. This is your low beam, high beam switch right there. So you can flash them really quickly or you can turn them on or off there. Signals and horn, of course, is standard. But again, on a bike that you're gonna potentially go on more adventures with, you do have your hazard warning lights, which I really quite like there. And then you have a traditional handlebar. That is really nice for mounting things like your phone or other type of things, a GPS system. There's a lot of mounts that you can get in the aftermarket that fit on a handlebar. So having that handlebar free there is really nice to have. And then you have a couple extra little things up here. You have a spot right there, which is designed to fit a Kawasaki accessory, which is the 12 volt accessory. So that gives you ability to put a USB port, 12 volt type port in there. Um, so you can power your device that you need. And then over here, you can see on the far side that is able to be, um, to fit, uh, accessory lighting. That would be the switch for the accessory lighting, which you can mount to a crash bar and have extra LED lights on this that give you great width, which is something that I've added to a Versus in the past and is really quite nice. But you can see the whole dash is set up for that. Not to mention also the windshield up here that you can't really see on camera, but it is good and it covers uh, the area. This one's not adjustable. We'll show you the adjustments on the uh, 650, but of course, because you have a windshield mount, whether through Kawasaki or the aftermarket, you can always add a taller windshield, larger windshield, those kinds of things, because it's already set up to be mounted. Now let's take a quick look at the dash, show you some of the features in there. So taking a look at the dash, the first thing you're gonna see is a really high red line of about 12,000 RPM. Now remember, this is a very small engine. It's a twin cylinder, a parallel twin. So you have very small um, pistons moving a very short distance. That is something that is very capable of revving to high levels. Uh, if you think about moving your fingers over a short distance versus moving your whole hand, uh, the smaller the pistons, the faster you can get them moving. So again, high revving is not an issue, but you are gonna be revving this bike to get some power. And I think you have a really clear tack here, which allows you to sort of take a good view of everything uh, when you're driving. That's really good to have. The other thing that's great, whether it's a beginner bike or otherwise, is having your gear indicator in there as well. So you've got neutral right now, which of course there's always a neutral light as well. But as you th shift through the six speed transmission here, you'll know exactly what gear you're in. And uh, that's really helpful as well. And then you have a bunch of things in here like your odometer up top, 
easy to read speedometer. A little tough to see on the edge there is a fuel gauge and a temperature gauge. Just on the angle I'm filming at, it's a little tough to see. It's easy to see from the uh, driver's area. And then you have all kinds of uh, things in here. Let's just cycle through some of them. So that's the top. We have trip A, trip B, and your odometer up top. And then on the bottom, you have your range. Uh, which is distance to empty essentially. It's a calculated range. Then you have kilometers per liter, which is a fuel efficiency. You can do miles per gallon. You can do liters per 100 kilometers. That's an instant reading there. There's an average reading there. And then there's back to the range again there. So lots of information that you can have in there. Again, ignore the fuel efficiency you saw. This bike is probably idled a few times. So very, very good fuel efficiency overall in here. But that's your dash. You will see an upgrade here on the 650. So let's bring the 650 in and talk about some of the same components there. So the Versus 650 is a step up in a whole lot of ways from the 300. This is a bike that I've owned, but it's also a step up in size. And for a 650, and again, Kawasaki uses this 650 twin in just about every style of bike there is. But for a 650, this is a larger bike. So I'm gonna jump across it again. I am about six feet tall again. So on this, I am almost flat footed. If I really push down, I can flat foot, but I'm just, uh, you know, maybe a centimeter off with both of my heels to balance this bike. It is a fairly tall bike. So if you're really, really short, you're gonna find it to be a little tall. It also is a little bit heavier, but some of that weight comes from the fuel tank, which is about a 21 liter fuel tank or so. When it's full, that's a lot of fuel for a motorcycle, but of course that gives you great range. Now, the other fuel tank is still very large for its size and that's a more efficient bike. So both of these bikes are gonna give you really good range. Overall seating position, there are some differences here. A little bit more plush seat and probably a little bit larger seat, but again, both as far as seating position are comfortable. I've ridden on this bike for, you know, hours and hours and hours. It's very, very comfortable. You can see the seating position is very similar in both. You're very square. You sit here, you're very comfortable. The mirrors are actually really nice. They're big mirrors and they're placed on the handlebars, which puts them close to you, which gives you a nice wide angle view behind you and the windscreen. We're gonna talk about the windscreen in a second because it is more adjustable, but you have a little bit extra body protection. A lot of people are surprised to find this bike is only a 650 when they see it in person because physically it appears very large. Now, it is heavier than the other bike, but a lot of this is not really heavy stuff. It's just extra body work, extra stuff. You do have hand guards here as well. So when you're driving this in cooler weather, you have a little extra wind protection around your hands and in, in the cuffs of your sleeves, that kind of thing. But with the windshield up, the hand guards on, you can drive this in very, very cold weather. Simply the style of both of these bikes could extend your riding season by, you know, up to a month on either end of the riding season if you're in a place like New Brunswick where we are, where the cold weather comes in and it gets cool to, too cool to ride. You can keep out of that wind and the style works very well. So riding position, very similar, very plush, very comfortable. Definitely feels like a little bit larger bike, but not too large. Now let's start taking a look at some of the key differences because there's a whole lot of things that this bike has that not everybody realizes. So let's start again with the front wheel here. Now this is a more traditional sport bike size. In fact, it's the same sport bike size as just about every sport bike in the Kawasaki lineup, potentially every sport bike in the Kawasaki lineup. So you have that traditional size, which allows you to put different levels of sporty tires on this. And it's a very common tire size, which is nice. So one thing about this bike compared to something like the Ninja 650, is if you're not taking a Ninja 650 to the track, if you're not dragging knees around corners, this one is probably all the sport bike you need. It is that sport bike tire size. You have the dual brakes now instead of the single that you had on the 300. So again, disc here, disc there. It's a little hard to see in the camera. Uh, these are also ABS brakes, of course. And then again, the upside down forks here. So this is the only 650 in the lineup with the upside down forks. This is what you see on more high performance bikes. And again, even the Ninja 650 doesn't have these. That allows you to have a few different things. First of all, there's less unsprung weight here, which is what you want. There's more stiffness up here, which is what you want. And it allows for the only adjustable suspension in the entire 650 lineup of Kawasaki. So that gives you really the ability to customize this suspension. Uh, very well. So it really is the sort of peak 650, the top of the line 650 in the Kawasaki lineup, and it really shows. So one thing you lose from the Versus 300X is a lot of people see the adventure styling, adventure bike styling to this bike and assume that this is an on and off road bike. It really is not. From the oil placement, oil filter placement, uh, from the tires, from everything else, even the suspension settings, this is an on street bike. This is a sport tour all through and through. And one thing I really like about this, it is still very, very nimble compared to something like the, the Versus 1000, which is much more touring bike, uh, a little bit less nimbleness. So you really have a sport bike feel to this while you're in a comfortable seating position. Now let's move through and look at some of the luggage. 
So when we talk about the luggage of the Versa 650, this bike wasn't always sold with these, but these bags standard. For 2023 it is, and that's a great feature. And there's a lot to these bags. First of all, you have the standard key, the ignition key that works there, and that allows you to unlock these and open them up. Once you open them up, you've got this Velcro area here. You can actually get soft bags in here, uh, which you could take them out and take them into the hotel room or something like that if you were staying at a hotel. However, these things also can be dis detached by pulling this up, banging them back a little bit and they'll come off and they come off in seconds and that allows you to take the hard bags off and take them everywhere with you. So you can have that sport bike kind of look to the back end or the touring bike. And again, they're all lockable with your keys. So when you're out touring somewhere, all your gear that's in here is safe. Now this one doesn't have a rear rack installed. That can be something you can put on as an option. You can see there's two little spots right here. Uh, if you take a closer look, that allows you to put a rear rack on. And this bike can have a top case as well. So you could have side bags and a top case. The best thing about all that is you'll have more space than you would ever need. This fits easily a full face helmet and then still has space to spare. You have the same thing on the other side and then you can put an even bigger top box on the back and you could take all the luggage you needed. Now, if you're gonna take two pieces People, or if you're gonna take a lot of luggage, it's good to have adjustable suspension. And the rear suspension here has the preload adjuster right there. So as this sags with some weight, you can bring that sag back out with that preload adjuster. And again, it's the only 650 in the Kawasaki lineup with that preload adjuster in there. So it's all set up to do what it's designed to do very, very well. So we're gonna start with the same very busy look, but we're gonna zoom into a few extra details here. The first thing I wanna show you is the windshield. You have this little tab right here at the bottom where you can press that down and you can raise it a long ways up or push it a long ways down and anywhere in between, which is super helpful because if you're in various types of wind, the buffeting that a windshield can create on your helmet uh, is, you can fix that on the fly essentially by adjusting it, adjusting it up or down. Same, with the, same thing with a hot day. If it's a hot day, you can bring it down, allow more air to you. On a cooler day, you can bring it up and just adjusting for your preferences, the speed you're driving, the wind out there, you can move that along, which is really nice. The other nice thing, we'll talk about the handlebar in a second, but you still have a little bar up here. A lot of GPS mounts are now available on this style of a bar. So you can put your GPS right above the digital dash. We'll show you the digital dash in a second here. You've still got the handlebar mount to mount all of your things. We're going to show you some accessory areas there. Let's zoom into the adjustable suspension as well and talk about that before we move on to some of the other little features. So this area is a little tough to film, but each fork tube is different. You have this style right here, which is your preload adjustment. And you can't see on the bottom, but it's very clearly uh, H and an L, so higher and lower preload adjustment right there. And of course, that's nice because when I first got my bike, uh, my Versus, I found it was set up a little soft for me. I wanted a little bit sportier ride, so I was able to firm it up. But of course, if you want a little bit more plush ride, you can soften it up and adjust it right there. Let's just show you the other side really quickly. All right, we're zooming in from a bit of an awkward angle here, but this is the right side fork tube and that's your tension adjustment is what they call it there. Uh, harder H and S, harder and softer as well. So again, you have the adjustments, the different style on each side fork tube. These are Showa forks and again, that upside down fork. So these are really the highest level of forks you can get in the uh, lineup. And you can see that, again, it's fairly easy to read on your screen here, but it's a little easier, much easier to read in person. Just hard to get a good camera angle to see everything and hold it really smooth there. But very easy to adjust. And the nice thing is you can adjust these types of things on, on the fly, so on your trip. So if you hit firmer roads or smoother roads and you want to adjust things up, you can do that on the fly, which is really, really nice on a touring bike. Zooming back out again, we showed you these type of cutouts, which again can be filled in with a USB port and an accessory lighting port uh, on this one. You have an additional one on that side here. If you get the KLR Adventure, you can see all of these ports kind of filled out for you already as from the factory, but these are set up to have an extra USB port uh, with a little bit more of a water resistant type uh, cover over there. So you have a 12 volt port over here, USB port that you can add over there and accessory lighting that you can add. And again, it's all pre-set up for you and ready to go but what we're going to talk about is right here which is the tft display which is a nice upgrade as well so taking a look at this tft display you're going to see some glare in there i actually left that in for a reason because the key with these tft displays is they're actually very easy to see and now i say that maybe i left a little too much glare in there uh, again compared to daylight uh, it's very easy to see you can see the rev counter up there so what you have here is a really nice display. Information is basically the same. There's a handlebar switch, which we'll show you in a second here, uh, which we can show you on the very bottom. That's what we'll do first. Right now set for kilometers per liter. We talked about that. That could be any level of fuel efficiency um, reading you want, liters per hundred kilometers, miles per gallon, that kind of thing. That was the instant and average. We just had the average show up right there now. 
Go through again, there's your range, all the same stuff. Average speed is an additional thing you get on the Versus 650 here. Uh, total time there, uh, batteries at, actually batteries are a little low right now, and uh, back to kilometers per liter. And then if you look just above that, the odometer right in there, you're going to see over here, you have uh, trip A, trip B, and the regular odometer. So most of that's pretty much the same, but you do have a tack here. One of the key things with the tack is you can set it up to flash to visually warn you at a certain RPM. This bike's gonna have significantly more torque and of course more horsepower than the previous bike, and you don't have to rev it as high. It's got a lot of torque in that four to 6,000, four to 8,000 kind of range. Uh, so you have good pulling power. You don't always have to shift as often on this bike, uh, but you could, like I said, you can set that, uh, um, the uh, tack to flash to indicate when you're getting closer to redline or wherever you want it to flash for you to shift. So if you wanted to be warned at 8,000 RPM on this bike, of course, redline's around 10,000, you could have that set up to do that. And then you also have traction control. Traction control can be set to off, can be set to level one or level two. So that's what it is right over there, level one. And that's great for poor weather, for traveling, whatever you need. You've got an extra little bit of security, which will keep the front wheel on the ground. It'll also keep you from sliding a rear wheel in poor weather. And then the gear indicator on the TFT dash is obviously uh, really clear and bright there as well. So really nice upgrade with the TFT dash here. Let's show you how you control that on the left side here. All right, a very busy shot here, but there's a lot to talk about really quickly. So let's talk about the controls really quickly. This is how you adjust that odometer. This is how you adjust that fuel efficiency uh, type area down on the top and bottom. And of course you can select to change your traction control. So you have that extra selection switch in there. Of course your uh, controls here are all standard stuff. The horn, the signals, the headlights, and the flash. There's a trigger there to flash your high beams as well. There's also the hazard warning lights down there. And then on this one, both bikes have a slipper and assist, actually, excuse me, just the 300 has a slipper and assist clutch. Uh, this one does not, uh, but you do have the adjustable levers here, both on the brake lever and the clutch lever to allow you to have different size hands uh, to fit. And then you have this guard here as well, which keeps your hands protected, not only from the cool weather, which is what I really liked it for, but if you've, if you've ever been out in an area where a stone shoots up or something like that, those kinds of things that can crack a windshield can also hurt a thumb on the handlebar. So you've got an extra protection there for both weather and debris, which is really nice to have. There is one other key upgrade between these two bikes. Every bulb on this bike is an incandescent bulb. So headlights, signal lights, tail light, they're all incandescents. Whereas on this one, every single light is an LED light. So you end up with the bright white LEDs, the instant on and off signals, and a bright LED on and off uh, tail light. So you can add the accessory lights to both these bikes. They would actually be the same accessory lights. They kind of mount to a crash bar out here. That's where we showed you where the switch would go. Both bikes can have a crash bar mounted with the lights on there. And what I like to do with those lights is aim them just a little bit further out. Now on this bike, there'll be LED lights. On that bike, they'll match the exact LED lights as well. What the benefit is of that is if you mount them just a hair out, you get a really wide view uh, at night. So you can drive these bikes into the night and have great visibility. These lights are fine. I prefer the white LED lights, but again, you can add that extra white LED light with the accessories here. So kind of an advantage to both bikes. The other thing worth pointing out is although this one does not have the bags on it, it is not the same bag that mounts on this one. There are sort of square box type bags on this bike. The 650 and 1000 have those style bags that clip on and off nice and quick and nice and easy. So there is a difference into the volume of luggage that you can store on both of these bikes when you go with the factory accessories. But again, this one probably has a few more options to strap stuff down without any options. And of course, those ones come standard with the bags. And of course, there's a price difference in there that allows you as well. So let's talk about who these bikes are for, because I think they're aimed both similarly and different. If you are the kind of person that wants a bike that does everything well, that's cheap to insure, both of these bikes kind of fall in that category. You want something that's upright and comfortable. Again, both these bikes are upright and comfortable. There is a difference. If you want something that's gonna be suited to go down the dirt roads, this is probably your only option. You've got a little bit more of an aggressive tire for that off-road adventure. Uh, on this one. Now, if you are someone who's gonna do a lot of longer, higher speed stuff, having the 650 is going to help a little bit. The 300 is fully capable on the highway, but it's gonna be in the higher revs and you're gonna find that you have a little bit less passing power on the highway than you would on something like this. Now, you can still move up from this and have more passing power again to the Versus 1000, but when you move to the 1000, you lose some of the playfulness of both of these bikes. And that's really the key to these two bikes. They are both a lot of fun to drive at just about any speed you're gonna to go to. This one's very lightweight. And the kind of thing with a lightweight bike that people forget is when you're driving a lightweight bike, 
there's no other way to get that feeling in a bigger bike. So you can move to more speed, but you can lose some of the playfulness of a lighter bike. This one is the ultimate compromise bike. It does everything pretty well. It can tour well. It can keep you warm in the cooler weather with the wind protection. It's got great technology. Again, it's got the bag, so everything it does is really pretty well. This one, you're going to make some sacrifices. You don't have the adjustable suspension front and rear. There is a few more budget components with a single disc on the front. So again, I don't think you'll be driving this bike a whole lot faster than you will this bike, but because this is capable of faster speeds, they put better brakes on it, and that will allow, and again, it is heavier. It might need a little bit better brakes, but there are some things that you're going to find that are a little bit of a compromise to get to a price point on this bike, but that might be exactly what you're looking for. This still might be more bike than you want. So why would you buy either one of these? If you want something that's versatile, that you can do all kinds of motorcycling in, whether it's an all day trip or an around town thing, whether it's a big adventure or just a short trip to the store, if you need some luggage and need to be able to take things along, these bikes are both really good for that. I would lean to this one as a lesser expensive bike. If you don't need to have the extra cost and you just wanna have some fun and ultimate high speed isn't what you care about, this bike really reminds me of my first motorcycle. My first motorcycle was a 250cc with some luggage that I could take anywhere and do anything, and it really didn't cost that much money. If you need a few extra luxuries, the adjustable suspension can make a difference. Now, you may be the person who sets it once and forgets it, so maybe it's not a huge deal for you. A little bit better brakes, a little bit more sporty on-road feel, a little bit more playfulness at higher speeds. This bike is going to give you all of that. There's not a lot of bikes in this class that do what this bike does as well as it does. So both are worth considering. And you can tell me yourself which one you prefer. So again, if you own these bikes, let's fill the comment section with what you like about these bikes so other people can see. And if you have questions about them, make sure you let me know because I can make sure that I come back to these bikes both in the comment section and in future videos. And if you want to see them in person, they're both right here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. This is the number one volume Kawasaki dealer in the country. They've got a massive showroom. It's a great place to come see all the bikes you want to see. So thanks everybody for watching.